Thank you for joining my talk. Um, using Fedora Core OS to ship your free open source software project. Um, my name is Joe Doss. And who am I? Uh, you can find me as uh, JDoss on IRC. Um, I'm a 23-year Linux user. It's probably dating me a little bit. Uh, my first Linux distribution was uh, Red Hat 5 that I installed on my dad's compact Presario when I was in like uh, freshman in high school. Um, currently right now, I'm uh, the Fedora package maintainer for the WireGuard tools uh, package in Fedora. Um, I've been a contributor to the WireGuard project since early 2016. Um, and I participate in the Fedora cloud and the CoreOS uh, SIG groups. And uh, my previous job, full-time job, was the Director of Engineering Operations for Kenna Security, um, it, which was recently acquired uh, by Cisco, which is pretty cool. Um, we ran about 300 plus uh, Fedora Cloud uh, VMs across 12 deployments on AWS and, and Google Compute. Um, and then right now, I work as the Principal Systems Architect at Forum, and uh, which is the open source software behind like uh, community sites like dev dev.2. So like what is forum? Uh, uh, again, it's the uh, it's primarily it's software for building communities. Um, it's got over 17 K stars in GitHub. It's uh, uh, open source software powers dev.2. Um, it's a monolithic uh, Ruby application. So it really has two, main processes that run. One is a web uh, uh, server uh, through Puma, and then uh, it has a background worker process through Sidekick. It has three dependencies right now, which is uh, Postgres, uh, Redis, and Image Proxy. Um, and so that those are the only really outside uh, dependencies that you need to run the software. Um, Dev.2's deployment is, is relatively complex, and it currently runs on Heroku. So when I first joined um, Forum, uh, one of the things that they wanted me to work on was to deliver this uh, concept of an enterprise like Forum Cloud um, like uh, product. And so I kicked that out uh, last year in the middle of the <clears throat> pandemic in, in its first iteration. And it really was tailored towards like a managed like offering. And one of the line items I put on my roadmap when I started, I was, I was like, man, it would be really cool to have, um, you know, uh, a self-hosted uh, way for users to consume the software. And um, so I, I really kind of wrote down a bunch of goals and I'll, I'll kind of go through those, which I think really shaped the, the, the project um, that, that we produce. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that I wanted is that the, the self-hosted uh, thing we were going to offer users, it needed to be affordable. Um, you know, it, the, it's, it, it's community software. And if you're using a community software through like another place like Facebook or whatever, you are the product. Um, and so you're not paying for it. So it's free, but you're, you're really losing a lot of privacy and all those things, which I won't get into. But the in order to make, you know, forum successful, it needs to be affordable. So that was like the number one top thing on, on my list is that if we can make this as cheap as possible for somebody to host, um, people will use it to, you know, uh, foster community for the interests that they like. And, you know, in, in the spirit of like not locking people into like a vendor, so you could easily host forum on Heroku like dev.2 is. Um, but it, that really locks you into using that one specific provider, um, which we, which we felt was like, not like in our user's best interest. So we wanted to be pro provider agnostic. We wanted it to be a reproducible regardless of where it got, um, deployed. Uh, so, you know, if we, if, if it deploys on, you know, DigitalOcean in a certain way and it deploys on AWS in a certain way. And it makes it really hard to, you know, make it re reproducible. So we wanted to have things be as rubber stampable as possible, which then it, it kind of buckles into like being easy to update and deploy the code. And, you know, if we're helping users 
uh, launch a server in a cloud provider, for example, we want it to be you know, safe for them to update the operating system. Um, it, you know, and we wanted users to be able to, you know, instead of just kind of throwing the code over the wall and say, hey, here, here's, here's the open source code, here's how we install it, good luck. We wanted to, you know, kind of foster, hey, this is the, this is, these are the steps that you take to, you know, keep yourself up to date and keep the forum code up to date because we all know uh, one of the most successful uh, free open source software that's supplied on the internet is WordPress. That also, you know, is one of the most largely exploited uh, uh, the pieces of software on the internet. So we want to we want to foster this like idea that hey, it's easy to deploy, it's easy to update, it's easy to update the operating system that we're say recommending that you use um, to keep people safe. Uh, we wanted to use like modern tooling, but not enterprise tooling. So you know a lot of the you know I've fielded questions uh, from some of our users where they're like, well, why are we doing Kubernetes? And, well, Kubernetes is great. I think it has a lot of applications and it's it's good software, and, but it really isn't affordable uh, in a lot of ways. In order to, if you want to, you know, use it in, in like a managed provider like DigitalOcean, AWS, or Google Google Compute, you know, it does have additional costs for using Kubernetes, um, and it also kind of locks you into their way of doing Kubernetes in a lot of ways. Um, I know you can move. Uh, you know, most vanilla Kubernetes can go wherever. Um, but, you know, we wanted to make sure that uh, users, you know, were paying the cheapest amount of possible to host their stuff online and also keep it, uh, you know, as agnostic to, um, you know, what provider they ended up at. Um, so, uh, selfishly, you know, uh, you know, uh, my day job allows me to work on uh, the self-hosted uh, repository. Uh, which is great, but I want to, I'm, I'm a lazy engineer. So like, I really want to use stuff from, you know, the enterprise stuff that we develop in the enterprise or even vice versa. If, if you know, we say, Hey, this is a cool thing for the self host. Maybe we can incorporate it into our like enterprise software um, to allow individuals to, um, you know, reap the benefits of both worlds. So, you know, lazily, that was one of the goals is like, you know, how can I, how can I leverage, the, the the stuff between the two projects um you know there you know, i also looked at to see how other successful modern web applications are you know offering self-hosting gitlab and discourse uh, forums are, are prime examples um and you know last i checked the, they basically cram everything into a container and ship that um i Personally, I think that that's a little, it's not the, I mean, obviously people are using it and it's successful, but I, I felt we could do better. We could uh, give people a lot more options to how they, how they host self-host forum, um, what type of soft, you know, you know, maybe they wanted to have a different version of Redis or a different version of Postgres or something. And they, changing that is relatively easy with uh, the self-host repo and using Fedora Core OS. Um, so really, the, the, I guess the TLDR is, that, you know, more than just the code. It, we wanted to give people the automation um, and the, the ability to actually deploy something in a self-hosted way on their own infrastructure with uh, some guidance to get them out the door. So that really shaped the, the project of the self-hosted repo. And uh, we already have been using Fedora Core OS in the Forum Cloud um, uh, product that we have. Um, and so it kind of made sense to, to figure out how we could use that in an open source way. So why Fedora Core OS? Well, there's a lot of talks and I'm not gonna really get into too many things, but I'm gonna highlight the things that were important to us. Um, you know, and as you can see, my uh, uh, slides are a little incomplete. Um, you know, if we wanted an immutable uh, operating system, but we're gonna say, hey, to our users, hey, go install this, this operating system let's give them a very reduced footprint and something that they can't really muck up too much, right? Um, which then offers some security benefits or as, as, as I would say, as best you can be secure. Um, you know, no operating system that you put on the internet is gonna be like 100% bulletproof. But I feel that like Fedora Core OS has a lot of advantages. It's got SC Linux enabled by default. It's immutable. It has 
um, a lot of good things that are are going for it that really are conducive to, to hosting a web application securely. Um, we don't have to be like container centric. Um, you know, we ship all of our software in containers for Forum. Um, we feel that, that shipping software in, in a container is, is, a, is a pretty darn good idea. Um, it makes it easy to update and roll back, um, which there's features in the self-hosted repo that allow you to kind of like, you know, if you update your, your Forum software and it doesn't really work, you can roll back really quickly to the last container release, which is pretty cool. And then also too, you know, Fedora Core OS has updates and rollback, rollbacks built in, um, which makes life uh, really easy. If, if something goes wrong. Um, and then really the, the, I think the most powerful thing is defining the configuration of boot um, using butane and ignition. Uh, you're able to, to, to get away from the, well, I put a server online, then I configure it. It's we define the server as code, you know, YAML, everyone's favorite uh, uh, configuration as code or, you know, infrastructure as code. And, um, you know, you're able to configure that at boot, and you know if it doesn't work, if, if something is wrong in the in the, in your ignition, it, the server won't boot, and thus you can say, okay, well, I'm able to launch something that is as exact as what as what I want when I turn it on. So that's probably the most powerful thing uh, in Fedora Core OS that uh, I think we really really leverage. We kind of abuse it in a lot of ways. We we use it uh, all over the place uh, in our systems engineering team. And of course, it has like modern systems tooling, system D and Podman, I think are fantastic. Um, they've come a long way for running a service, uh, you know, and running it well. And Fedora Core OS just really has great cloud provider cover cover coverage and also to bare metal support. So, you know, really, I, I want individuals to be able to install, take our forum, uh, you know, ignition configuration. And if they want to boot it off their server in their basement, they can. It is totally doable. Um, or if they want to use any of the supported cloud providers uh, that Fedora Core OS uses, that gives users the freedom to choose where they run the software, which we felt was uh, just super important. So the forum self-host repo and the link is going to be in the contact to the last slide, so you can go check out everything. Um, we developed two Ansible roles, which I think I'm, I'm gonna kind of briefly talk about. One is the FCOS Ansible role. That's really for interfacing with Fedora Core OS's um, JSON endpoints that they talk about their, for each stream that they have. So you're able to you know, uh, basically get information off of Fedora Core OS's uh, main site, you know, find out what the most current version is and, and depending, depending on what cloud provider you're using, you know, Boot, you know, launch like an database AMI or the, the images on, on Google Cloud or pull down the or have DigitalOcean pull down the image because they don't have uh, direct support. Cough, DigitalOcean, if you're listening, please work with us so we can get uh, DigitalOcean support, um, like, like true uh, uh, Fedora Core OS support on DigitalOcean. That would be fantastic. Um, we also have a Q. Q QEMU playbook. So a lot of when you're developing and working with Fedora Core OS, I think one of the biggest challenges is, well, how do I how do I create my my butane configuration? How do I how do I provide this this uh, you know configuration on boot without having to go through like a painful development life, life cycle? Well, we have a method in 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 our repo where you can launch if you're on Linux. I'm, I run uh, Fedora Workstation. Um, where it will fast boot a QEMU uh, Fedora Core OS. So you can iterate really quickly and playing around with like how your server boots and whatever application you choose to use Fedora Core OS with, you can quickly get it, you know, iterate on that. I feel that that is a, a really good um, developer, uh, you know, centric, uh, nice thing to have. Um, so really the, um, and then we, at the core, we have basically an Ansible Jinja 2 template that we, um, you know, basically rubber stamp down based on input from you, the user, on what your forum would look like. And there's really only a handful of things that you would want to change, primarily the domain name, the email address, you set some secrets. Um, and I'll get into that. But we also add in some, some nice things 
Um, system, system D, OMD, and swap on ZRAM are really uh, awesome to have uh, in like a, a hosted in, you know, in a uh, server environment where you're, you know, using a web application as your primary like software running on there. Those things make, make life a little bit more stable. We actually saw some really good benefits that there's a GitHub issue where we graph the change and the benefits of running system D, OMD, and swap on ZRAM. Um, because we like to um, manipulate servers with Ansible, not necessarily configure them, but maybe like do systems administration tasks or DevOps tasks. We bolt Python 3 in, into our image, uh, which is kind of a kludgy way to do it, but it works. It gives you the ability to run Ansible on Fedora Core S because uh, Fedora Core S doesn't ship any type of like, you know, Python or Ruby or anything. So you're not able to like, you know, leverage something like Ansible to get, get the job done. So that's the repo in a nutshell. The link will be at the bottom of the talk. Uh, definitely check us out, uh, give it a spin. Um, really what the repo I hope in the terms of this talk is that you could look at it and be like, hey, I don't wanna run forum, but I wanna run something else. And I wanna use the things that you see in here to make your life easier. Um, particularly the Fedora Core OS uh, and Butane roles that are a, a pretty good way to manip, like launch Fedora Core OS uh, infrastructure uh, quickly with Ansible. So check those out. Um, I, I like them a lot. I use them for my personal stuff too. So really Ansible is just a rubber stamp. It wasn't really chosen for, you know, to be like an infrastructure as code. It doesn't really, don't really keep state. Like we, we, we actually use Terraform in our enterprise, uh, our forum cloud offering. Um, but uh, you know, I should really shouldn't say enterprise, I should say more managed, our managed forum cloud offering. Um, but, you know, for this, for this, this talk and for the cell phone repo, we really just kind of use it as a, a method to fill out the Jinja 2 template for butane. And there's things that are the same that will always be the same for 99% um, of all forums that get launched with this. They go, if you know Ansible, they go in all bars. Then you can create your inventory based off of that. And you know, set the things that really matter. Like my domain name is forum.wtf, and I give it a subdomain of community, and um, set my email address. And then further down, if you look at the repo, you set the um, uh, secrets and stuff like that, and via Ansible Vault, so you can keep them secure. It, it really is just a rubber stamp. You could drive um, most of this other ways if you wanted. Uh, but we use Ansible. We found it pretty cool to, and pretty easy to use. The gem of Fedora Core OS, I feel, is butane and ignition. Uh, at the top, you have like the human readable YAML. Um, this is actually a, 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 the actual file uh, that was produced by the self hosted repo. Um, where, like, for example, if you look at the template, like the SSH key is a variable. So it gets filled in with your SSH key versus my first my uh, open source one that I use. And then at the bottom is like the, the JSON equivalent of, which is the ignition configuration that gets booted by Fedora Core OS. It's super great. Um, I, I really feel that if more people saw how powerful butane and ignition are, um, they'll be hooked on using it for their infrastructure. Um, it, it is really, a, 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 it's a gem in my professional life right now. Um, system D and Podman, uh, as, as one of my old coworkers used to phrase everything that was okay. It's a not terrible way, uh, to run services. I, you know, I, there's a lot of opinionated ways to run services on Linux. Um, I, I really feel that system D and Podman have come a long way, especially over the last year, the Podman team has been, uh, extremely responsive to, I had a couple of GitHub issues on their, on their repo. I'm trying to run, uh, uh, you know, basically forum containers via system D. Um, and probably the most beneficial thing of using system D with Podman is you get the, uh, the wants in the before directives at the top of the unit file. Um, I think you can see my mouse here. Basically these ensure that you can have the services that your application needs that they're running and that they start in a certain order. Um, you know, we had some users being like, well, why don't you just use uh, Docker Compose to launch all these things on, 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 a, on a Linux server, which is totally doable. You totally could do that. Um, 
Well, Dr. Compose doesn't have any concept of like order of operation that, you know, like if sometimes you have to wait for things to come online. Um, and if you look at in, in our main forum uh, repository for the actual code, we have a, a Docker Compose file that actually uses like a bunch of things to kind of wait for services to come online. So this is a much more robust and, you know, we get to have better control over when things boot and like there's certain things like where like for example the forum rails container has to share a volume with open resty so it can it can serve uh like css and and then uh, uh javascript well if you just restart one versus the other you can lose you can lose kind of sync of who has access to what volume so uh we kind of bind those all together as like a as a service so we, instead of you know starting you know restarting forum rails and restarting forum open resty we just restart forum service and it will restart everything that is needed so you kind of get to make this dependency soup that really is a not terrible way to launch services um and i will note that like so even if we're, you know we're using fedora core s here you could take these unit files out of the template and i think one of the things on my on my late roadmap maybe next year would be to make an rpm that would just install these unit files instead of having you could just install forum with these unit files versus having to like um you know launch a whole server uh, you know just for specifically for forum to, to be online so um yeah that's like systemd and podman i think are, are, are pretty great in a lot of ways um so we had so we launched this this repo out to the world, uh, it it got some decent. Uh, it, its reception was pretty pretty great. I was actually not terrified that it would be a flop, but like it actually got some attention. And one of these individuals, uh, death by paper cut, uh, good old death by paper cut. Uh, he he replied back to a, a Twitter post on our main forum account, and I really this really resonated with me. It's like over the next five years, we're going to see who are going to be full of amazing self-hosted solutions with all sorts of things. Pretty excited to see this. And I am too. Like, I, I really believe if we give our users the framework to host the software that they want and you're able to, you know, get software launched effectively, we're going to see some cool things. And I think at the center, self-hosting free open source applications securely and easily is something that everyone can do with Fedora CoreOS. It provides you with a stable, updated operating system with a lot of tools, a great community. Uh, you know, you can come holler at, holler at us in the, uh, uh, the Fedora Core OS IRC channel. Uh, we have uh, a great GitHub repository for reporting issues. We have uh, the um, community section on the discussion boards. Um, Fedora Core OS really has enabled my work at Forum to be pretty great. And with that, that's my talk. Um, come check us out, contact me or don't. I'm not your father or your system in, um, but I'm more than welcome to field e emails, hit me up on Twitter. You can look at my bad coding decisions on GitHub, check out the cool, uh, super cool URLs. Uh, yes, Dusty, I am not your father. Um, and uh, yeah, give us, a, give us a try kick the tires. If anything, if, if you're not interested in running community software, just check out the self host repo. There's a lot of pretty good ideas on how you could use Fedora core OS, uh, to host the things that you really care about. So I can open it up to questions because we have about four minutes left. Yeah, I wish my uh, data center racks looked that cool. Um, that was this pic. This picture is, was taken uh, about ten years ago. Uh, 
Well, I am glad everyone liked it. Um, again, if you want to holler at me, uh, I am also JDOS on uh, LibreChat as well. So you can hit me up in DMs if you have any questions. Um, we also have forum.dev, um, which is kind of like more of our community for people that want to use forum in an open source way. Thank you much.